What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a major update in the Trent Oxfanot contract uh, saga because Trent has revealed his two demands to Liverpool FC in order to sign a new contract but uh, Football Insider is reporting that Trent Oxfanot is prioritizing uh, extending his Liverpool contract instead of going to Real Madrid but he also wants Liverpool to show real ambition in the transfer window and he also wants to wait until December to see how Liverpool fare in the title race and in the Champions League because Trent Alexander's main priority is winning trophies, winning titles because he is an elite center uh, right back, the best right back in the world and he wants to be among elite footballers and he wants to win trophies. That's his main motivation and Real Madrid is targeting Trent Alexander but only if Trent is not signing a contract extension and he has outlined his first choice option is to stay at Liverpool and I think Trent is saying basically that if Liverpool are challenging for trophies and if he can fulfill his personal ambition of winning trophies at Liverpool then he would like to stay here. Contract talks of course will dominate the agenda at Liverpool because Salah, Van Dijk and Trent are all out of contract at the end of the season and Liverpool have confirmed and Fabrizio Mano and multiple Liverpool journalists have confirmed that Liverpool will sit down with all three of these players but especially with Trent Oxfano, the boyhood Liverpool youth academy player who is the icon and he is the poster boy he is the face of Liverpool and he is the next captain in line after Virgil Malayek leaves Liverpool and uh, Trent can negotiate with clubs outside of England from the start of 2025 and Real Madrid of course are monitoring the situation but Liverpool absolutely want to extend the contracts of Trent, Van Dijk and Salah before uh, the end of the year because we don't want a scenario where they are entering the January transfer window and still haven't signed a contract extension and Trent has indicated that he hasn't yet decided fully whether he will stay at Liverpool or leave. Winning trophies is the key factor in his thinking alongside an ambition to captain Liverpool. So what do you think about this? Do you think Trent is right waiting until December to see how Liverpool fare under on a slot and this next uh, you know run of fixtures is even more crucial now that we know that basically all of Trent, Salah and Van Dijk are seeing how Liverpool are shaping up under on a slot. I think so far so good Liverpool have won every game bar the Nottingham Forest game. We play Bologna on Wednesday I'm really looking forward to that game as well and Trent Oxano reportedly is fully focused on Liverpool this season and his personal desire is of course to stay at Liverpool why wouldn't he want to stay because it's his boyhood club and if he can if Liverpool can match his ambition of winning trophies or challenging for trophies then I think he would love to stay because Trent Oxford has been a Liverpool fan growing up his whole family supports Liverpool he's happy in Liverpool and he even though he has fulfilled all of his ambitions at Liverpool so far winning every single trophy that there is to be one at Liverpool apart from of course the Europa League which Liverpool entered twice and Trent couldn't win that but apart from that every other major competition Liverpool have won with Trent Oxfanod and Real Madrid will not exert any pressure on Trent Oxfanod as he prepares to make a crucial club decision but my fear is that Real Madrid will offer Trent Oxfanod basically maybe even higher wages than what Liverpool are offering but they will also offer Trent a massive signing bonus something crazy could be offered like 50 million because remember that's still a bargain for Real Madrid they are saving a hundred million pounds on transfer fees if they sign Trent on a free transfer at least 100 million but I think Trent would be worth at least 150 million if he had a contract and Liverpool would not sell Trent on any of their circumstances if he still had a contract so why would we let Trent leave I think Liverpool should make Trent one of the highest earners at Liverpool and we should also offer him not just a new five or six year contract but we should maybe promise him that he could be kept become captain of Liverpool 
in one or two seasons. I think it's safe to say Van Dijk is maybe staying at Liverpool for another one or two seasons. After that, Trent Alexander should be the captain of Liverpool. And Peter Rook, a transfer correspondent uh, in the UK Journalist, is reporting that Trent is more than happy to stay at Liverpool for the foreseeable future if Liverpool matches his ambition of uh, the desire to win trophies. And that's what uh, the main motivation of Trent Alexander is. But he wants Liverpool to be active in the transfer window. I think it was a very underwhelming transfer window for not just Liverpool fans, but Liverpool players as well. Because Van Dijk asked for transfers, Arneslot asked for transfers, and in the end we managed to sign Chiesa and Mama Rashford for the future. But apart from those two players, Liverpool didn't do anything in the transfer market. And we only signed Chiesa for this season, which is, a, I think, a lot of people expected a lot more transfer activity from Liverpool. And another way Trent wants Liverpool to match his ambitions is regarding Liverpool's transfer business. Liverpool struggled to bolster and enhance their squad. And yes, we have probably one of the best and one of the most competitive squads in Liverpool's history. Will that be enough to finish above both Man City and Arsenal, who are both absolutely elite and they have an absolutely amazing squad as well, each of them? Man City lost the Rodri for the season, which of course is a big boost. I'm not celebrating the injury. I'm just saying that that's a big boost for Liverpool. But still, Liverpool would absolutely have to have an almost perfect season to finish above Man City and Arsenal. And it remains to be seen whether Arneslot can achieve that, because we don't want to put too much pressure on Arneslot. We don't want him to feel that Liverpool fans demand that Liverpool win the title in the first season. It's it's very unlikely and unrealistic. I'm not saying that it can't be done and Liverpool won't win the title. It's tough because a new manager, a new manager needs time and it needs a lot of uh, you know work on the training ground to implement all of his ideas. And so far, Liverpool has had a lot of great games, but we also struggled in some games. Uh, definitely, Ipswich Town, first half, uh, definitely we struggled. We struggled against Nottingham Forest pretty much the whole game. Against Wolves, it wasn't a great game either. So there is will be games like this, and against better teams, we might drop points in these kind of games. But Trent Alexander revealed that there are two key contract demands that he wants uh, Liverpool to fulfill before he commits his long-term future to Liverpool. And it's understandable that Trent wants to keep fighting for trophies because he's entering the prime years of his career. From 25 to 30, 31 years old, that's when Trent Alexander will see his best years and he wants to fulfill his ambition of winning as many trophies as possible. But also winning uh, a Premier League title means as much as winning uh, two or three La Liga titles with Real Madrid because Liverpool win it, you know, a lot less often and it's a lot more difficult, a lot more difficult to win a title in England than it is to win with Real Madrid in Spain. Basically, if you go to Real Madrid, you're pretty much guaranteed to win a trophy pretty much 8 or 9 out of 10 seasons. So if Trent goes there for 5 seasons, he's guaranteed to win 5, 6, 7, 8 trophies. Does that mean as much as Liverpool winning 2 or 3 big trophies in the next 5 years? I'm not sure. I don't think so. For Trent, who is a Liverpool fan, I think he must realize that winning a Premier League title maybe one Premier League title in the next three years means as much as winning two La Liga titles in the next four years with Real Madrid, just to make a comparison. And Trent Alexandre, according to news outlet Football Insider, wants reassurances in two major things in particular. He wants the club to match his personal ambitions, both in terms of winning trophies and in terms of the transfer market. Of course, Liverpool are top of the Premier League right now, and they are, uh, you know, flying in the Premier League and in the Champions League. We lost only one game, but they have not shown enough ambition in the transfer market over the course of the summer, failing to bring in a number six, a defensive midfielder. And yes, Arneslot managed to find a brilliant solution with Ryan Grabenbeck having been transformed into a world-class player. But what if an injury happens to Grabenbeck? Touch wood, it doesn't. But that's a scenario that 
we need to prepare for. The January transfer window is still far away. We still have a lot of very tough, very difficult games to play. Gravenbeck's minutes needs to be mentioned, ma managed. His workload needs to be managed carefully. And Arneslot also needs options to rotate. We have Endo, we have Curtis Jones, we have Tyler Morton. But none of these players are anywhere near the quality of Gravenbeck or McAllister. And that's, I think, where Liverpool need to strengthen. Do we absolutely have to sign a defensive midfield? in the January transfer window, not necessarily, but it would definitely help with the workload of uh, Gravenbeck and McAllister. We can't expect them to play every single game in the Premier League. And Trent Alexander-Arnold is looking for more ambition in the transfer market by Liverpool in order to be convinced where his future lies. And I think if Liverpool did some early groundwork in the transfer window in November or December, we should reveal that to Trent Oxlade-Arnold and show him that we are working really hard to strengthen the team. And we should also give him assurances that we will be very competitive in the transfer market and we will spend more money. Now Liverpool's average home attendance went from 52,000 to just a couple of years ago to 60,000 and that throughout the course of the season where Liverpool played 25 to 30 home games a season on average that should amount to a lot of uh, additional revenue but also Liverpool saved a lot of money in the transfer market, maybe in the anticipation of, uh, you know, maybe having to replace one big superstar in the next uh, 6 to 12 months. But also, maybe the right player wasn't available. We wanted to be mended, we didn't want a second choice. So Liverpool absolutely need to show ambition in the transfer market. And I think if Liverpool keep this uh, form up and if we stay top or near the top in the Premier League, then Trent will sign a new contract if a good enough contract offer, of course, is presented to him. It's uh, more difficult to think what Salah wants. I think Salah wants to stay as well. He publicly said Liverpool haven't offered him a new contract yet and he wants to stay at the club. Van Dijk said he wants to stay at the club. He still sees himself as uh, being a top player for the next two or three years to play at the top level for the Netherlands he wants to play at the top level and he wants to stay at Liverpool for the next two or three years as well so that's uh, our, my feeling around the club but Liverpool need to keep winning and we need to have a very good first half of the season to convince these players that Liverpool is the place to be uh, so I'm hoping that will be the case we also I also want to share what Arne Slot said about the title race he said I think everybody is realistic enough even though we are top of the table all the players have so much experience they understand six games into the season doesn't give you a realistic view of the Premier League table that is more uh, it is more like in 19 games when you can really feel okay where are we in the table at the halfway stage but of course it helps if you get some good results especially if you bring in a new manager a new staff being a successor of uh, such a great successful manager like Jurgen Klopp of course if uh, we would have lost four or five of the first six fixtures then life would have been a bit different than it is now but I don't need to keep the players level-headed they they are themselves that way I don't think it's necessary for me to convince the players about all the challenges we still face. I said it a few times now in different press moments today. Two years ago was the last time Liverpool played in the Champions League and we all know what kind of season that was. Last season we had a much better season but then every time Van Dijk and all these other players get, got to rest during a week and could play once a week. Yeah, because in the Europa League we could rotate the squad a lot. So that's a completely different situation than playing Champions League during the week against a very tough very hard opponents and then playing Arsenal, playing Aston Villa and then playing all these top teams that we are going to face after the next international break. So for us there is still a lot to prove especially if you look back at the season two years ago and it's still almost completely the same group of players. So Arneslot absolutely realizes the challenges that lie ahead and Virgil van Dijk also said that we have a very good squad, a mixture of experience and talent and players who are at a very good stage of their career. It is good to see the way we are playing. Mo Salah was many times in the box heading balls away and stuff and that is the kind of commitment we need from everyone so so far so good it is only one game we all realize that now we focus on the Champions League do I pay attention to on the table no December is always a crucial month the teams who go through that well winning games having no injuries have a big chance to be successful so let's see and Van Dijk said that we need everyone to be at their best uh, Konate is an amazing fantastic player who can still be better he 
he's defensively solid. He was a bit unlucky with the goal that we conceded, but the qualities he has, he's outstanding. He's still learning and growing and gets better, looks after himself much better to be ready every three days. And he has a young player uh, behind him, Kwanzaa, who is also knocking on the door. We have Joe Gomez as well. I would actually rest Konate maybe against Bologna and play Van Dijk next to Kwanzaa or Gomez, depending on which player suits Bologna's playing style more, because we need to rotate a little bit. We can't keep playing Konate and Van Dijk every three days and expect them not to pick up injuries but that's for Arnesto to decide and I'm really looking forward to the rest of the season I think Liverpool made a great start so let's build on that let's continue the momentum against Bologna and if we could win that then we could take a giant step towards already qualifying to the next phase of the Champions League but we want to finish as high as possible in the group to get a favorable draw so that will that will be Liverpool's main ambition as well thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this have a nice day see you later goodbye